When you're investing in real estate, it is important that you have the right expectations. If you're looking for a pie-in-the-sky dream, you're always going to end up on the wrong side of the stick, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Nails Show. This is Holton Wise TV. I'm James Wise, and I give it to you straight on this show. I am here to help you invest in real estate. Start, build, grow your real estate portfolios, right? Today I'm doing so for my man, Carlo. Carlo, you're an investor from Atlanta, bro. And I want to help you make money in this business, right? Um, what I will not do and what I do not do is just tell you everything you want to hear, right? You ain't going to make any money by me fluffing you, dude. That doesn't make any goddamn money, right? I'm a steward of your money, so I need to set the proper expectations for you, let you know what we can and cannot accomplish, right? And what you're at right now, you just ordered another uh, set of videos for me, right? I'm going to be doing 10 videos for you, and I want to make sure you get a good deal, and I want to make sure you go into this with the proper expectations. What you said to me was... Uh, you're hoping to spend around $150,000 per deal, and you want to do a multifamily Burr deal, right? For those of you that don't know what Burr is, that's buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. It's a great strategy. I made a fuck ton of money doing it. I fucking love it, right? Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, it's great. Made a lot of money. Love money. You love money. We all love money. That's why we're all fucking doing the show together, right? We all fucking love money. But... We have some issues with that, bro. Like, we all want money. That's cool. We all get that. But like, can are you in a position to actually do that? Is the market in a position to actually allow you to do that with your current position? And I got to tell you, dude, the answer is no, bro. Because uh, you said you only have fifteen grand uh, of your own money to put towards this deal. Okay, so when you buy a non-owner occupied property, right? If you're using a traditional loan, just so you know, right? You have to put down 25%, bank kicks in 75%. So with your 15, you wouldn't be able to get up to a $150,000 property, right? You'd only be able to do a $60,000 property, okay? So that is going to eliminate uh, all the multifamily properties uh, that could be like done in a traditional way. On top of that, you want to do a bird deal, right? Which is going to require you to come in, pay all cash typically, uh, renovate the sucker, and then long-term, you could do the refinance, right? That makes sense. Uh, but you can't do that, right? You can't come in and pay cash, right? Because you only got 15 grand. So you're hoping that you can do hard money loans uh, for the rest of the money, which in theory, yes, in theory, you can. And we do have a list of lenders. Some are traditional, some are non-traditional. Uh, I will provide that to you with the link to this video. Uh, however, that's where I see people getting into trouble, right? I see people going to the gurus and, and, and just getting, you know, washed away into this whole, you know, all these theories and things that could, in theory, work. But in the real world, does it play out that way? Is it practical? Is it replicable, right? Is it possible, Carlo, that you can go in with your 15K cash, get a hard money loan, I find you a Burr deal comes out really good you end up pulling out most of your money if not all your money and we repeat the process is that possible yes is it likely to happen any more than one out of a hundred or a thousand times probably not dude like you can get struck by lightning but you shouldn't live your life in fear uh of that right uh likewise right that's not like a really practical uh thing to happen for you right now because in the cleveland market duplexes triplexes and quads are freaking flying off the shelves right now they are they are being sold multiple offers like a day or two after they're listed on the market right and there is a lot of investors coming in cash and these aren't even distressed assets right so it's very hard to pick up uh, a duplex triplex or quad especially triplexes and the quads because we don't have a large inventory of those right so it's super competitive so whenever a burr opportunity arises right you typically can make more money on a bird deal than you can on a traditional deal, right? You get a higher cash-on-cash cash return when it's all said and done, right? So when bird deals come around, 
dude, those have so many offers, so many aggressive offers. So for you to be able to come in and take one of those down when you have to pay a lot of money for your hard money loan, I mean, it's probably not going to happen for you because there's so many people that want these and they can buy them for a more expensive price than you can because they don't have the additional cost of that money. In addition to that, when the sellers are selling them, they're going to be much more attracted to their offers than your offers. When I deal with a lot of new, new real estate investors and if I could find out Whatever marketing guru guy like set this up, like made a lot of people believe this. I would kick that dude in his fucking dick so goddamn hard. It's not even funny. For some reason, new real estate investors out there have this this thought that hard money loans are basically cash, right? I get all these people like, yo, cash offer, man. And I look at it and they send me a pre-approval for a hard money loan. I'm like, that's not ca cash offer, bro. That, that's a pre-approval. No, no, it's a hard money loan. It's cash. Is it your cash, bro? No, no, it's not my cash. Whose cash is it, bro? It's the hard money lender's cash. Oh, okay. So it's an approval for a loan from a lender. No, no, it's hard money, dude. It's cash. You see how that sounds, right? It sounds fucking stupid, doesn't it? Uh, but for whatever reason, a lot of people that are new to real estate, like they believe... The hard money loans are like cash in the perception of a seller. Not the case, man. A hard money loan is a loan, guys. It is a friggin' loan. And oftentimes, in the Cleveland market, to be honest with you, uh, brokers, you know, established brokers, like I myself, I'm uh, the number one seller of this type of investment properties in the Cleveland market. I've sold over $200 million worth of this stuff. When I get an offer... That's got a hard money lender to it, attached to it versus an offer with a traditional lender. Oftentimes, I put much heavier weight into the traditional lender being able to get to the closing table, right? Because there's just so much nonsense and just tomfoolery and schmucks out there claiming to be hard money lenders, right? You know, when you get a traditional loan, it's from an established lender you probably know of, right? Like if Wells Fargo. Uh, comes in and says, like, hey, you know, pre-approval, we're Wells Fargo, right? We know Wells Fargo has money to make the loans, right? But then you get these hard money guys, and it's a hard money lender that, you know, maybe I haven't heard of, or when we're submitting offers to other agents, maybe they've never heard of this lender. So, like, what is that? Like, it's just like if your name is Carlo and you got a hard money lender named Bill, uh, and we're like, yo, give us your pre-approval, and Bill's like, I'm going to give the money to Carlo. Well, who the fuck is Bill? How do we know Bill has the fucking money? You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm in the investment space, but not every single real estate agent that is selling this real estate to you guys that you guys are interested in is familiar with the investment space. So if I have a less likely chance of knowing or being familiar with that hard money lender, you can, as someone who's in the business, right, of investment properties, you can imagine that you take 99.9% .9 of your other realtors who mainly only handle residential real estate they don't really work with investors they're like totally confused or not interested in dealing with these hard money lenders right everybody is trying to do one thing get to the closing table right so if you're a seller there's three types of offers starting with the the most likely to get to the closing table finishing with the least likely to get to the closing table cash traditional loan hard money loan. So, Carlo, for all of those reasons, uh, you know, going forward, I can try to find you deals uh, that you could theoretically do a Burr deal on. I can do that, only do it on multifamilies, uh, and you could hope for the best, hope that with your 15k in cash, uh, you could get a hard money lender to do the rest, and we could put in your bids, and a seller will accept your offer over all of your competition. I can do that. I have no problem making you another nine videos just like that. But I got to tell you, as a steward of your money, a guy who's trying to help you actually get something off the ground here, odds are pretty good we're going to do nine videos. You're going to shoot out nine offers, and nine sellers are going to tell you no, right? Uh, and then if you want, you could do another 10-pack and another 10-pack and another 10-pack. I will keep taking money and looking for properties and putting out the effort for you if you want me to. But here's the thing, right? Due diligence costs money. 
and time, right? So you could either do it all on your own or you could pay me to do it, right? I don't do anything for free. So, you know, as long as you're paying me, I'll do it as much as you want. And we could do 100 and you could hope for that one in 100 shot. Or what I think you should do, something that is a little more practical, will allow you to get into the game, get things going, is take a look at a lower cost single family home. Now, this one that I'm going to show you is in the B grade uh, neighborhoods, okay? And if you can't come up with this much as a down payment because it's a little bit higher than your 15, uh, if you do like this overall plan of attack on your next set of videos, I can go down into the C grade area and we can get you an even lower price point, right? B in the 60s, 70s, and 80s as opposed to up in the 90s. So let's take a look at the numbers on that property right after this commercial break. Welcome back. I hope you made the smart choice, used your thinking noodle there, and bought yourself some freaking Holden Wise merchandise, man. This looks great. But on to the reason you're here, the property, right? You're not here to look as awesome as me, but you're here to do some awesome investing. Am I right? 3447 Monticello Boulevard, Cleveland Heights, 44121. Just hit the market two days ago, right? This is super low-key, low-risk, single-family investment, right? This is something I like for investors who are trying to avoid being on the Tenants from Hell show, trying to avoid uh, getting into, you know, riskier situations, right? If you're looking for some low-risk stuff, guys, this is it, right? I like Cleveland Heights and the house that already has a tenant, right? Don't be uh, confused by the photos. These were the photos uh, prior to them putting in a tenant, right? Uh, all told, just a pretty nice, uh, reasonable single-family home. Yeah, it's a little dated, uh, but the neighborhood, you know, Cleveland Heights, commands high rents. So we're already uh, going to be able to pick this property up with an existing tenant. This tenant paying 1100 a month, right? That would be 13200 for the year, right? You run your normal fixed and variable expense estimates, right? This is my anticipated performance of property similar to this, right? I believe you'll be bringing home $6,230 a year, right? I think you're going to spend approximately $6,970 a year on average running this property. But it's very important to note when you got a rental like this, and I tell you guys, like, I think you're going to spend like $6,970 a year. That's on average, and that doesn't mean you're going to spend that every year, right? Like, I have money going to things like your capital expenditures, right? That's your roof, your furnace, your hot water tanks, right? Roofs, last 30 years. Furnaces, last 30 years. Roofs, house like this. Uh, let me get another exterior photo again here. Just cruising through some of the other stuff. All right, looking at this, right? This house right here, this roof, this is probably about a $6,000 roof, right? So that's a capital expenditure. In your chart, I have you guys saving $660 a year. It doesn't mean Holton Wise keeps that money, right? That goes back to you. It's dispersed to you. But I don't want to do these videos and give you guys the thought that, like, you know, say the, this roof, right, you go 10 years, right? You don't ever have to do anything to the roof. I don't want you thinking that for 10 years you got an extra 660 bucks, right, of pure profit because I know – in 10 years that you're going to have to drop that $6,000, right? And then if you drop that $6,000, it would make that 11th year appear to be an unprofitable uh, year for you, right? Same thing with your furnaces and your hot water tanks. Furnaces, 30-year life expectancy costs about three grand. Hot water tanks, $1,000 is what they cost to replace. 15-year life expectancy, right? So you have to factor that stuff in. So when you see these estimates, understand where these numbers are coming from. And let's talk about uh, what the listing agent said. Lovely three-bed Cleveland Heights home. Original hardwood and built-in accent. This charming colonial. Oh, original hardwoods. I should say hardwoods and built-ins accent. This charming colonial. Got it. Classic kitchen with stove, fridge, and dishwasher included. Eat-in area with built-in cabinet. 
opens to large living room with fireplace feature. Door off kitchen opens to small deck. Two bedrooms on first floor. Full bath with tub slash shower and closet for storage. Upstairs is huge bedroom with sitting area. Great getaway. Master suite. Finished basement area for additional living space. Separate laundry area. One car attached garage. In the heart of it all near University Circle and Coventry. University Circle and Coventry. Very nice areas, right? So that's what your listing agent said. But, you know, cutting through the normal real estate agent, listing agent stuff. That's what I do here, of course, right? So you just have to understand the numbers, how it works out, right? With the expense estimates that I just provided for you, they have this thing listed at 99 and a half. I think you could pick it up for about 95. If you pick it up for 95, you would only need to put down 23,750. We would get a bank to loan you the other 71 and a quarter. And that would result in an 11% cash on cash return estimate using that financing if you paid cash it would be a 7 cap right that's what's important to you and remember that factors in the fact that you got budgeted money being saved towards the roof the furnace the hot water tank cuz none of those items are new right you have to factor that in right so the years you have left on this investment prior to replacing them they're actually going to probably pay you a lot more than that 11%, but don't consider that profit as you're running your real estate business. Know that, yeah, that money's coming back to you, but it really ain't yours, dude, because the do the bill's coming due, right? You're going to get that big old $6,000 roof bid. You're going to get the furnace. You're going to get the hot water. Those are coming down the line, so make sure you're saving that money. Likewise, you also have to save for things like Repairs and maintenance, which mainly happen at your turnovers, and then also prepare for the inevitable uh, non-payment of rent. Now, this is a B-class investment, so that is going to be few and further between. A lot less likely for that kind of stuff to happen uh, frequently as it does in like the C and D neighborhoods. But know that in real estate investing, we can never eliminate all risks. All we can do is mitigate that, so you still need to budget for that stuff and that's what i do here on this show that's what i help real estate investors do i make sure you guys understand these things as financial investments right i don't just come on here and talk about like built-in cabinetry and this or that right because what are you you don't really care about that you want to know how much money you're probably going to make and what are the risks you're going to take on to try to make that money that's what i do so if anybody else out there is watching the show and you want a set of personalized videos just like this one, send my team an email, sales at holtonwise.com. Give us your number. We'll call you, and we will talk to you about what makes you tick, and then we'll try to match you with the perfect property like we've done today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.